Hi, I'm Dallas Green from City and Color, and I'm going to do a deep dive on my record sometimes. Okay, so save your scissors. What a what a what a journey that song has sent me on. Uh, with every song I write, just about every song I write, there's a fast version and a slow version, because I. I like both styles of music. I like real slow, real slow songs. And I like real sad, you know, sad, slow music. And I like really up-tempo music too. So with that one, I think they almost always start with the slow version is the one that I'm leaning towards. So the slow version would have probably just been something like, you know. Something like that, which is it probably sounds very familiar to people who listen to me because it's either that or the other thing. So that song, uh, the tuning of it is very strange. The tuning is you get a, you're in standard tuning to start if you want, or you can tune it and then put a capo on, but uh, capo on four, you tune your A, you know, which is now a C sharp or D flat, and it goes up. You take your B, your, your second string, and you just tune it just up a little bit. You get this weird kind of dissonant thing. Okay. So now you have this kind of like weird dissonant open thing that doesn't sound really like anything. But this is when I was younger, I was always interested in uh, just moving the, the tuning keys around to see what, what would come from it. And this is a perfect example of that. I don't know what... I was thinking when I did that, I always do the A up to B tuning a lot with like a lot of tunes, right? But this other little move with that, I have no idea why. That gave me the ability to go. That little move there was just really easy because of the way I tune the guitar. And then it all goes kind of from that. So I was probably sitting with my friend Trisha and I said, fast or slow? And she was like, fast, you know? which is like a thing that would happen for the rest of my, my, the last 20 years, you know? If I think back to when I made Sometimes and we decided, Joel and I decided, my manager Joel and I decided uh, we'd like to try to put it out ourselves, how, would we, how do we do that, you know? Because we had been working together for a while at that point, but, you know, things were going really well on one side of the coin, but on the other side, it wasn't going well. So we thought, uh, you know, we need to take more control of it. That was sort of like where the inception of kind of Dine Alone comes from was I had this record. We felt like it, it, there was an audience for it, but we weren't interested in giving it away to anyone. And not to mention that because I was in Alexis on Fire full time, we didn't want someone else to sort of dictate what was going to happen to it while well, I was doing something else. So that was really the, the main reason behind uh, starting Dine Alone and putting Sometimes Out on ourselves. Even though we didn't necessarily realize what was happening or understand how the internet worked that well, we realized that the whole reason that I was making this record was because apparently everybody had already heard these acoustic songs I had. It's like... People keep telling me that they want to hear these songs when I see them at a show. I don't know how they've heard it, but so maybe I'll just record some better versions and we'll put it out ourselves because there seems to be a bunch of people that want to hear it. That was the only reason we did it. Some of the song titles we'll go over and why I named them them. See, this is the thing. People think I'm this really sad, miserable person, but I really like laughing too. I just don't think it's important for me to write a song that's funny. Hello, I'm in Delaware is just a Wayne's World reference, you know, because sometimes the song is about figuring out how to tour as a young person and kind of getting in the van and going out there with your friends because you want to play your guitar. And then all of a sudden you realize, oh, my Lord, this is kind of awful, you know? And you sort of, your body and, and your mind and your spirit and everything has to align to just like tell yourself to keep doing it because sometimes the show is good. And so the scene in Wayne's World where they're like, Hi, we're in Delaware. Sometimes it feels like that, you know? And it, 
it's not necessarily Delaware or Lincoln, Nebraska. It's just a, more about having a shitty day, you know? That's what that's about. In the Water, I'm, I'm Beautiful, that's a, a lift from a Vonnegut novel because I just, I was reading a lot of Kurt Vonnegut when I was in high school. Um, you know, listening to a lot of mixtapes and, and reading a lot of books, but he was, he was a voice that just sort of uh, made sense to me. There's a lot of Alexis songs that have a lot of Kurt Vonnegut references and stuff too, just because, you know, uh, good writers borrow the best ones to steal. Yeah, that's just that. Sometimes like the whole idea of the song being called sometimes was something, but then I thought I'll call the record sometimes because this is just something that I do sometimes. Occasionally I play a acoustic guitar by myself and sing. The Savior Scissors music video was a, a kind of a concept by our our good bud, Mark Riccardelli, who had filmed some Alexis stuff for us. We had a show uh, that was planned in St. Catharines, a Bedlam Society show, which was uh, like the thing that Joel used to, our, my manager used to book shows under. So it was a show with me and uh, Jay from Bedouin Sound Clash and Walter Schreifels from Quicksand and Grilled Biscuits. And the idea was just to kind of follow me along in my day in St. Catharines from where I lived with my parents, you know, and then like it would ultimately get to me walking it out on stage. Great idea for a video. Doing it all in one day and like doing a whole, shooting a whole music video and then finishing the, that shoot with a concert you have to play. A little tiring looking back at it, but very, very fun idea. So that's why like, you know, and Alexis, when you see there's like Alexis jamming in this f insulation factory, that's where we used to jam. So like you come in and Walter is laying on the couch listening to us jam because we were actually having a jam and Walter was maybe going to help produce our record. I go to Walter Austin X Music because that's where I used to go to get strings and all that stuff. And like, so it was just literally a day in the life of, of what I would normally be doing if I was home, you know, jamming with the boys and it just happened to, you know, my, one of my musical heroes is in the video because he was playing a show with me, which is like maybe lost on me at the time. Cause I was so like in it, but looking back on it, it's like, that's an insane sentence. Here I am. It's just a strange uh, trip to think back. I have never really given myself too much time to think about the things I've done. I'm always thinking about the things I'd like to do. I think that's the way kind of you should live life at least is, uh, you know, be proud of what you've done. Try to be, but always think that you can create something just as good or, or better. So this year has made me think a lot about what I've done because I couldn't do the other thing. I remember walking through the West Edmonton mall and, and I was on a, we were playing there and I was stopped to look at the people who were ice skating and I realized they were ice skating to save your scissors. Yeah, that was it. When I was on tour with Alexis on Fire, waiting to play at a, a big show we were headlining, and then I was walking through that mall and I saw these kids ice skating to Save Your Scissors on the radio, I was like, I don't know, I've entered into a new, this is a new version of me now. And I'm not, I don't know if I'm even ready to deal with that. I think especially too, because I was doing it sort of on my own terms and independently with Joel and my friends, there was nobody like to guide us either. We just sort of were just figuring it out. So moments like that, just as a kid who wanted to play guitar and sing, moments like that, you're just going, you're, you're kind of going like, hmm, you know. But then at the same time, it's like I sleep in my parents' basement. Something's wrong, you know. And like that was, again, like when we realized that putting City and Color out our, by ourselves was absolutely the right, like the right thing to do, you know. So, yeah. Mm -hmm.